Thanks so much for joining me here again. And I must say, I'm really excited to be able to give you all a little bit of help to shoot wonderful nightscape images. This series is all about keeping it simple. I will be referencing some more advanced techniques and many of which I've already covered in my last Nightscape Workshop online series. But for the most part, I wanna make these videos straightforward and very easy to follow. One thing I've learned over the years is that it's so easy to overcomplicate photography, especially Nightscape photography. So if I do that, I want you to let me know in the comments down below. This series is for you and therefore I want you guys to have as much input as possible. Now, I wanna remind you that I still have my workshop program guide, here it is, available for you guys to download from the link below. And as well as that, you can grab these shooting guides uh, and I like to laminate these and to keep in our camera bags. So I, I guess as a, as a reminder of camera settings while you're out in the field, now, while you're on the website, you'll notice a PayPal link, which is there for those who have the capacity to help me financially with this project. Now, I wanna stress that this is non-compulsory and everything I'm producing here is completely free of charge. No questions asked. But if you'd like to help me out, I will greatly appreciate that. Now, just one last thing. I'll be providing links for you to download raw files with each episode. And this gives you the opportunity to edit some of my images and to give you practice with the various software used. Okay, so that's enough of that. Let's get into it. In this episode, I wanna look at learning the basics well. So we'll consider the following topics. Basic camera equipment, the best lenses for nightscapes, simple camera settings, accessories to make life easier. Now, after we've looked at that, we'll go out and shoot something. Does that sound okay? All right, well, let's get started. What is the basic camera equipment required to get a nightscape photograph? So in this video, we're talking about learning the basics well. And so I wanna show you the basic equipment that I'm going to be taking out with me when we get out onto our shoot. And firstly, I've got my Nikon Z6. Now you've seen this camera, 20 millimeter f 1.8 lens. This is a combination I use in just about all of my nightscape videos. So you're probably well familiar with that. Now that is an excellent camera for nightscape images. I fully realize that not all of you guys have got an excellent camera and lens set up. So I'm going to take a couple of other cameras with me. Firstly, I've got my, this is a Nikon D7100. It's a crop sensor Nikon camera. I've got, at the moment, it's got a, a Tamron 17-50 f2.8, but I've also got the kit lens here, the Nikon kit lens. So I'll take all of that with me, see if I can get something out of that. Also, I'm gonna use my Panasonic G9. Now, I'm actually filming with that, so I can't show you that one, but this is the Panasonic GH3. It's a similar camera to that. Now, this is a micro four thirds camera sensor. So it's, it's, it's half the size of this one. So it's nowhere near as good in low light as this camera here, but I do have a pretty good lens, which is this one. It's a 15 millimeter f1.7. Look how small it is. It's just a tiny little lens, but it's a good piece of glass. All of the Panasonic uh, Lumix and Olympus Micro Four Thirds lenses are fantastic. So I'm gonna take that as well and see if I can get something with all of these. Okay, so that's the, the camera and lenses that I'm gonna shoot with. We well, need a good tripod. Whenever you're gonna shoot nightscapes, it doesn't matter uh, whether you're gonna shoot complex or, or simple nightscapes, you need a good tripod. Now, I've showed you this tripod many times. This is my Surui W2204. This is the carbon fiber model. It's got a ball head there. It's nice and strong, solid, but fairly lightweight. And uh, you just need something that's gonna hold that camera steady without you having to go to all of the trouble of, you know, putting rocks on the legs or anything like that. You just want a steady tripod. A few other basic things that, that you'll need to have. Firstly, I've got a headlamp torch. This is one that's a fairly new one to me. It's a um, LED lenser. Can't see it. I think it's a MH5. But anyway, it's a, it's a pretty good little uh, lantern and it's nice and powerful. Good for walking around in the dark, two hands free. The other thing I've got is my light painting torch. Now you've seen this one. This is a LED lenser, again, same brand. 
P7.2. A couple of years old now, but still, it's a good torch. It goes really well. I've got my half CTO gel on the front. The reason I use that is to make sure the LED color, which is obviously very blue, if you've ever seen LED lights, is just not quite so blue anymore. And when I do some light painting in my images, it's color balanced far better than it would be otherwise. Now, a few other things. Gloves. I just have these very simple little gloves uh, to keep my hands warm, and yet I can still operate the camera because they're, they're fingerless on the outside. They're actually two pairs of gloves that are joined together. And it works really, really well. I'm very happy with those because I've still got that dexterity in my fingers, which is really important when you're outside. Here's another light which I've showed you before. This is a, a Z96 video light. Good little light, um, dimmable. So I can put this on, on subjects and just use it as a low level light. Now I've referred to these before, so I'm not gonna go too far into that. It's got the CTO gel on the front again to balance the light. Uh, another thing that I take out with me is a lens warmer. Now, this goes on, uh, I won't take it all out, but it just wraps around the lens, heats up and stops it from dewing up. And at this time of year, we're in July here in Australia, uh, you get lots of dew on the lens. So that works. Now, you don't have to have that, but I'll tell you what, if you don't have something to keep that dew off your lens, you're gonna be totally frustrated every time you go out to shoot. Believe me, it's happened to me heaps of times. Um, another torch, this is a bigger one, more powerful torch. So this one's good for just seeing my way around in the dark, but more than that, when I wanna focus on something that's a little bit away, I just shine this torch on it and it is awesome. It is really, really powerful, lights up, makes it really easy for me to focus on those things. Now, one other thing, now this is really, really important. It's a little stool, just a tri-legged stool. See that? Now, I get really sore in the ankles uh, and just carrying this around, it's quite lightweight. I can just hang that off my camera bag and um, I, it's, not, it's not a big deal to carry this around with me. And of course, when I, when I set my camera up, I just put it down and it is a godsend, let me tell you. So, all of these things. Um, oh, one other thing is, I don't know if you can see this, but a remote trigger, which I've got on my tripod here, which I always use to trigger my camera shutter. And the reason I do that is because I often get away from the camera to actually fire the shutter because I'm ready to do some light painting. And you'll see when we get out in the field how this works, but it's really important to be able to control the camera without having to be at the camera all the time. And I find that to be another one of those gadgets. It's not an expensive thing to, to buy. I realize that all of these things add up and you don't need everything all the time. But I've got these things and I wanna show you how they work. And I, again, I don't wanna complicate this. I wanna keep it as simple as possible. I'm just showing you what I have and the reason I use all of these things. All right, from here, I'd like to take you out on location to shoot something. And remember, this series is all about simple nightscape images. So I'm going to keep it just that, simple. Let's go. Well, here we are out on the farm, and you can see behind me there is this gorgeous old wool shed, which is gonna be our foreground point of interest. Now, it's just about blue out, the sun's just gone down. I've got a little bit of time before it gets completely dark, and I'm gonna use that available time while I've still got some daylight here to work out exactly where I'm gonna set my cameras up, my tripod. It'll be just about here, not too far away from where we are now. And one of the reasons I wanna do that, I've specifically chosen this location because I wanted a foreground subject that wasn't too close to the camera. And why is that? It's because of the focus. Remember, I'm gonna be shooting single shot exposures tonight. So if I have something that's too close to the camera, at the it doesn't matter what focal length really, if it's too close to the camera, then I might have focus issues. So if I'm gonna focus on infinity. I wanna make sure the stars are in focus. And that building is probably about 15 to 18, 20 meters away. So it's plenty of distance to be still in focus at the focal lengths that I'm gonna be choosing tonight. So I'm gonna have a look around, work out where I'm gonna set my cameras up and I'll come back to you when it gets dark. All right, so first up, I'm gonna shoot with the Nikon D7100. Now this is a crop sensor camera. so. In relation to a full frame camera, it's a 1.5 crop, which means I'm getting a tighter field of view than I would on the full frame camera. Now, I'm using a kit lens on this. You can't see it there because I've got a lens warmer all over it at the moment because it's freezing out here. It's really, really cold. 
Um, uh, so the kit lens is in 18 to 55. At 18 mil, it's f3.5. So I've set it to f3.5. I'm going to be shooting this at 15 second shutter speeds. Now, I want to talk to you about that because you know my little chart. I've got recommended shutter speeds and recommended ISOs and recommended apertures. So the aperture f3.5, because I can't open it up any, any further than that. The shutter speed. There's always a trade-off between aperture, ISO and shutter speed. If I underexpose my images too much, then they're gonna come out too dull, and then I've gotta boost the exposure when I get it into Lightroom, and that's gonna increase the noise level. So there's always that trade-off. The more light I can capture, in other words, the more shutter speed I can have, the better. But of course, that will cause star trials if the shutter speed is too long. So it's always a compromise. So I've chosen 15 seconds. I put my uh, ISO to 3200, and then I went to 4000. I even tried one at 6400, and I did, for these shots, enable long exposure noise reduction in camera. I don't normally do that, but for these single shots, yes, I do. So the other thing I always do is shoot in raw format because you get the highest amount of data retained in your images if you shoot raw. Helps immensely in post-processing. So let's just have a look at what we've got here. Oh, one thing just before we do that, uh, it's a rule of mine, I always focus first on the stars. Now, focusing is difficult. I've got a video link here to, a, to a, a video that I produced a while ago. Have a look at that. It goes through a lot of the dynamics of focusing. Um, but I, when I tried to use the live view screen here, I couldn't see a thing uh, as far as stars were concerned. Now, I can see it with my naked eye, but on the back of the screen, I couldn't see anything. So what I did, I focused on the side of the, the shed up there. Now, that shed's about 18 meters away. So at 18 millimeters at f3.5, my infinity focus point is way closer than 18 meters. So I know that if I focus on the shed, I will have infinity focus. I've got my tripod up nice and high and thankfully, because it makes it so much easier on my back and my knees and my ankles, having the tripod up at this height makes it easier to work with. Normally I don't, but because the land is sloping down the hill here, it, it enabled me to be able to do that. All right, so now let's have a look at the images. Okay, so here's our first exposure, which looks fantastic. Now this is shot at f3.5, 15 seconds, ISO 3200, white balance of 4000 Kelvin. All of these images for all cameras are shot at uh, 4000 Kelvin white balance. So let's have a look at the others. A little bit different lighting there. I'll show you about the lighting in a minute. That's shot at ISO 4000, and that one is shot at ISO 6400. All the other settings are exactly the same, so you can see that one's a bit brighter. And I did enable long exposure noise reduction. We'll see how that comes up later. Really happy with these. All right, so next cab off the rank is the Panasonic G9. I've got a 15 millimetre f1.7 lens on the front, and I was gonna shoot this one wide open at f1.7. So I did a couple of different variations. I shot 15 second shutter speed and 10 second shutter speed. I think, for the focal length, 15 is a little bit too long, but I wanted to make sure I got enough light gathering power. And the same as I did with the Nikon D7100, I did enable long exposure noise reduction because for these smaller sensor cameras, I think it makes a huge difference. And my advice to you would be, if you're gonna be shooting single exposures, enable long exposure noise reduction in camera, in the menu. If you're not going to be shooting, if you're going to be stacking for noise reduction, in other words, taking a whole lot of photos one after the other, or doing star trials, or doing time lapse, then forget it. Don't enable long exposure noise reduction. But anyway, just looking at these images, they look fantastic. Uh, on the back of the screen, I've shot these at ISO 4000, and, and one at ISO 3200. So I'll just work out which one I like the best out of these. Okay, so last but by no means least is my trusty Nikon Z6. Now, this is not a competition between these three cameras. Th this camera I know is going to blow the other two away, but I just wanted to compare and show you the difference between using this camera, which is a full frame camera, as opposed to the other two, which are various crop sensor cameras. So, I shot this with the settings that I would normally shoot, uh, and that is 15 second shutter speed, um, if I ranged it between f2.2 and f2.8. Now this is one of the big advantages of using a, a prime f1.8 lens. This is a 20 millimeter f1.8. 
Uh, the other one, the first one was 18 mil, second one was 15 mil. This is 20. Now don't get confused by this because this, even though this is a 20 millimeter lens, it's got a bigger field of view by a fair margin because this is not a crop sensor. The other two are cropped, so you're basically cropping in on the size of the image. Nevertheless, um, this camera I know performs flawlessly. I've, I've used it for, for a long time now, uh, and just looking at these images on the back of the screen, they are awesome. So I've got, uh, as I said, two, f2.2, f2.8. Now, normally, I don't shoot this camera with long exposure noise reduction enabled. And, and I don't need to because it's so clean at high ISO. But for one of these shots, I did actually enable it in camera just to see what the difference might be. So that, that'll be interesting when we get back into the post-processing. Um, as you can see, I've got a lens warmer here on this one as well. Also, I've got my remote shutter release, which is here in my pocket. Uh, it was connected to this one. I didn't have it connected to the other two, so I had to run around a bit more like a headless chook. Uh, lens warmer. Uh, hanging down at the bottom here, just like I've showed you before. So all in all, fantastic. This, these images, is a, a fan, I know they're going to be good. I'm very comfortable with this camera. Now, what I want to do is show you the lighting because I did all of these in one shot. I couldn't possibly run around. So I had some low level lights set up. So I think that'll be interesting for you. All right, so what I've got here is a Z96 video light with an orange gel on the front. As you can see there, magnetic gels sitting down here on this piece of metal on the ground, shining up into that tree. Now it's only on a fairly low level and that's why this is called low level lighting for obvious reasons. The light itself is concealed from the camera which is down there because it will be behind uh, a, an object, but we're shining up into that tree. So this light is on for the whole duration of the shot, whether it be 10 or 15 or 20 seconds or whatever. So it's got to be at a low level, otherwise it may well overexpose and we don't want that to happen. You can use any light. In fact, I've got another light over there, which I'll show you now. Now on the outside of the shed, there's this beautiful corrugated iron wall, and I wanted to light that. So I've got this little light panel. I've only just not long purchased this. It's a Yongnuo, it's just like a loom cube panel. It dims right down to 1%. Problem is at 1%, it's too bright. And I'm still on, I don't know, I'm 30 feet away from that wall. So what I did, I put it onto this, this old flower pot here and I got this white towel which I carry in my bag with me and just put over the top of it like that and all that that was just enough to dull it down so it's not too bright anymore so I guess it's probably about a half a percent now um, so one you'd expect one percent to be okay wouldn't you but that's just the way it goes sometimes now there's one more thing I wanted to do regarding low level lighting it was inside the shed here I wanted to come back inside the shed put another light in here, and it's a Z96 again with the orange gel uh, on the floor facing up into these gorgeous rafters because I want that glow to, to seep out through the, the hole in the wall there and underneath, you can see some of the light underneath. And I think that looks pretty good. Now again, it's on a very low level. I don't need a high level in here because there's a lot of reflective surfaces. Um, but there's just one more piece to this puzzle. So I'll show you that now. All right, so I've got inside lit, I've got the front wall lit, and I've got the tree lit from underneath. They are all with low level light, so they're on for the whole duration. But this side wall here and this tank and this grass and everything else is not lit. I'm going to light paint that with my LED lenser P7.2. You can see it here. And all I did was just get the light and briefly sweep it across this section of the image for probably about six or seven seconds of the total duration. So uh, that's not the full 10 or not the full 15 seconds. A lot of people ask me about that. But generally, when I'm shooting at these high ISOs, and especially um, single shots like I'm shooting tonight, I don't need too much light uh, because it's really easy to blow out the images. Just a subtle bit. And you'll notice also, the camera's down there, so I'm off on a, a good 90 degree angle. It's one of my number one rules of lighting. Always light from angles. And every single light that I put up here tonight is on an angle. So that's the setup of all the lights that I had here tonight. Okay, so that was a lot of fun out there, but I wanna show you how I do my post processing on this type of shot. So let's get into the edit studio. All right, so here we are in Lightroom and you can see the first image we're looking at here is from the Nikon D7100. Now I've done some edits uh, to speed things up a little bit here. 
What I've done is actually just that the highlights down, whites up, you can see the difference there. Um, nothing much else done at all except for noise reduction. I've added a fair bit of noise reduction to be honest because this image is noisy. So even though I enabled long exposure noise reduction, I'm not happy with the noise in this. So I've plus 37 luminance, plus 50 in detail, which is the default, and plus 39 in contrast. And you might ask me, why did I choose those numbers? Well, I normally go between 20 and 30, but I had to punch this up a little bit further. And I don't want to go any further, but it'll soften the image too much. Now, I always apply lens corrections. As you can see, I've clicked chromatic aberration and profile corrections there. So we go right back to the top again. Uh, I did adjust the white balance slightly uh, because I wasn't happy. It was very green. I didn't like that. So you can see here, just looking at the overall image, um, I'll press F for full screen. You can see what I'm talking about. It's um, Look, it doesn't look too bad. And it all, it all depends on what base level you're coming from. But if I look, if I zoom into that sky, uh, you'll see that it is actually very noisy. Very, very noisy in that tree and everywhere else. That's shot at ISO 3200. The one I shot at 6400 is even worse. So I'll just zoom into that one and you'll see uh, pretty much the same settings that I've applied. And that's also really, really noisy. So all in all, I'm not happy with, with that, but it's not a bad image. When you look at the full screen image and you take the image as a whole, which I suggest we always should do anyway, um, I think it doesn't look too bad. Now, what else have I done to this image? I'll just go back to the other one for a minute because I think that's slightly better. You notice the sky looks a different color between these two images. Now, that's really weird because I didn't do any different adjustments. So uh, it's just the only difference is the ISO level in there. Now, uh, one thing I did do was put a graduated filter. And you can see here, I'll just click on it because I did want to adjust the sky separately from the rest of the image. You can see what happens there. So I increased the exposure and the dehaze. Now the dehaze will add noise. Now I, I appreciate that. So if I take a bit of that out, it might help with our noise, but it won't pop that sky as much as I'd like it to. But anyway, look, you can see how I, if I decrease the exposure on that sky, it gets quite dark, obviously. You know, it's, all, it's always a compromise. So I'm just gonna press done on that. So let's have a look at that sky again. Yeah, it's, it's still noisy. I was trying to just punch a little bit more out of the image. So anyway, here's looking at our shot again, full screen. Not too bad overall. Let's move on to the next one. Now, I got a real surprise when I moved on to the image from the Panasonic G9 because this has a two times crop factor. And let's just go to this image here. And I'll show you, I've done some edits, but I'll go through those in a minute. I just want to show you the full screen shot here. This looks actually really, really good. It's, it looks much cleaner than a Nikon D7100. Now, one of the major benefits of this camera and lens combination is that I'm shooting at f1.7, as opposed to the other one, which was f3.5. Now, that, that is an enormous amount of light gathering power advantage, this lens has over the kit lens on the Nikon. So even though it's a smaller sensor, uh, and like I said, I'm a little bit surprised, but pleasantly surprised. So let's go through the settings. Firstly, I've gone down to enable uh, chromatic aberration and lens profile corrections, which I always do, and then noise. Now I've added luminance plus 32, contrast plus 32, details at 50, which is standard. Color, uh, just slightly increase that because sometimes you get chroma noise, which is more color noise. So I tend to look that look at that quite um, a lot with my images just to make sure there's not too much color noise. So I've adjusted that up a little bit. No um, sharpening. This is default sharpening. I haven't added any sharpening to this image. All I've done here is increase the exposure a little bit, decreased highlights and added some whites. Now I do that to nearly all of my nightscape images uh, and I'm not saying you have to do the same thing I do, but I'm just giving you a bit of a guide, I guess a, a starting point. Now, what else did I do? Um, I, once again, I added a graduated filter. You can see it up here. Click on that so you can see what it looks like. And what I've done is done some adjustments to the sky. Now, I'll often do this because I, I don't always want to adjust the whole foreground the same as I do the sky. So that's why I use a graduated filter. 
Now I haven't done much, I just added a bit of dehaze in here. Hardly anything else. As you can see, all of these sliders are on, on zero. So what that's done is just added a little bit of punch to that sky and, and I quite like it. Now, what else have I done? Um, nothing there, that's, that's it. That's pretty much all I've done to that image. Really basic edits, as you can see here. Now if we go full screen again, I'm very happy with that image. You can see the cloud started to roll in. So the Milky Way, which is up here, is fairly much covered. The other thing you'll notice uh, with this image compared to the other one, I'm zoomed in slightly more. It's because of the different focal length. Okay, so now I wanna go to a full frame. So let's go to the end here. This is my Nikon Z6. Now instantly you'll see it's a wider frame. You can see I'm fitting more in, even though this is a 20 millimeter focal length. Now this particular shot is shot at f2.2 at ISO 4000 for 15 seconds. Again, I've done some edits. So I've gone down to lens profile corrections. Now here, I didn't enable profile corrections because it's already built into the, to the lens and camera, but I did add noise reduction and I've gone to 32, 50, 31 and 48. So you can see that um, it's pretty standard noise reduction for all of these images. I didn't add any sharpening. These are default sharpening settings. I haven't touched them at all, and I hardly ever do. All right, so um, I've changed the white balance slightly, as you can see here. Now, I find with my Z6, it can be a little bit uh, too green for my liking, so I've added just a bit more magenta. Now, I don't mind a little bit of magenta in this sky. There was, a, because the clouds came rolling in, there was a little bit of lighting hitting these clouds, which actually changes the color as well. But you can see here, I've got a lot more Milky Way showing in this image than I did in either of the other two. Now I did add a graduated filter to the sky. Let's have a look. You can see there, I've just adjusted the sky portion and all I've done is added some dehaze plus 30 and exposure plus 0.45. Not much, just a little tiny bit. Now you will also notice down here, I've added another graduated filter on this corner and I've lowered the exposure. The reason I did that is because I was light painting from in this corner here and sometimes the light hits this, this area of the ground or grass or whatever there and it gets a little bit too bright. So I like to often brighten that down. You can see the, the graduated uh, effect that has had there. So if we look, for example, at the before and after, you can see this is the before image and this is the after image. So I've added quite a bit of, of color into that sky um, and, and boosted the exposure overall. Now there may be one other thing. Let me just have a look at this adjustment brush. Yes. So the adjustment brush I've added here and you, you can see when I hover over that, let me just show you again. I've added some exposure in here because I, I put very little light into this foreground. Now I'll tell you one other thing I might do here, just using an adjustment brush. And um, to show my point, I'm gonna zoom in on that door. Now there's quite a bit of overexposure here on this because that's where my low level light was inside. You can see it inside the, the barn. So what I'm gonna do is grab the adjustment brush, drop, drop that level a little bit, and just gently paint that on this image. Now you'll see the difference that it makes when I tick this show selected mask overlay. And there we go. So I'm just gonna drop the exposure overall a bit there. Uncheck that so I can see what it looks like. Uh, okay, one other thing I might try is actually dropping highlights because it's the highlights that are killing that, not so much the overall exposure. That's better. See, I can see the color in there again. It's not actually white. I want it to look yellow, not white. So I've just dropped it down. All right, I like that. I'll press done. Now I'll zoom back out again. And you can see what I've done is actually dulled down the light, but just in that section there. Now you can do that on any part of your image. Anything that is too bright, you can dull it down just by using these selective adjustment brushes. Now, I'm not, it's not my intention here to go through all of the details of how to use Lightroom. There's a million and one tutorials on YouTube uh, to show you how to do that. But the, I use the adjustment brush quite a bit. Also the graduated filter quite a bit. Crop tool obviously is obvious what that does. It's a really easy to use tool. And the other one is the radial filter. So a radial filter, you might put uh, a, a vignette by just creating a circle in the image, something like that, dropping your exposure. 
and then uh, inverting that so you can sort of see what I'm doing here, creating almost like a spotlight in the middle of the image. Very useful for all sorts of forms of photography, uh, particularly portrait photography or, or things like that where you want to actually hone in on something. Uh, it's awesome. And the other thing you can do with these is actually hone in on a particular section of your image. So let me just fix that invert. So I could actually hone in on something. Let me just show you this. I'm not going to do it here, but just to, just say if I wanted to adjust the light over there, I can just brighten it up just by using this little filter. See how that works? It's pretty cool. Now I'm not going to do it here, but you, you can see how it can work and I can actually bring that right in. Let's just say I wanted to increase the brightness on this drum here. I could do that just on the drum. Now I'm not going to, but I'm just showing you an example of what is actually possible. So I'm going to delete that because I don't want to use it. And I'll show you this image full screen. I'm very happy with that, of course, because this is shot with the Z6 20mm f1.8, single exposure, very, very clean image. So I'll just leave that there for a minute so you can have a good look at it. So that's the Z6 at 20 millimeter focal length. This is the, let me go, where is it? This one here is the Panasonic G9 at 15 millimeter focal length. Remember, these are all single shots. Uh, that's great. I really, really do like that image. I think that's a real good shot. And this one is the Nikon D7100. That's a 1.5 crop factor. Now this one is, in my mind, the worst of the three images by a fair margin. So I'm not very happy with that camera and lens combination. If I was shooting with that camera and lens, I would have to do stacking for noise reduction because I couldn't stand all that noise in the sky. But you know, it just depends on what gear you've got. Everyone has their, their uh, equipment that they already have and they may not want to spend a lot of money on new lenses. But anyway, hopefully that helps you get a bit of an understanding of my basic processing on these single shot nightscapes. So there you have it, our first episode done and dusted. I'll be really keen to get your feedback down below in the comments and make sure you download the free guides and raw files which are also listed underneath this video. I'll look forward to seeing you next time when we consider another topic about nightscape photography. But until then, I hope you have an awesome week and don't forget to get out under the stars real soon. Okay, I'll see you later.